Hey everybody, what's up? Chad Wesley Smith here for Juggernaut Training Systems and Juggernaut AI. Uh, today I'm gonna to be talking about get, taking you through a step-by-step -step guide of how to design a bench press program. This is part of a series. Squat was already released a couple weeks ago, so make sure you go and check out the squat version as I don't wanna repeat myself too much in this. Uh, so I'm gonna be a bit brief in some sections, but if you watch that video and like the 10 other videos that I'm gonna to refer to during this one, it'll give you a more in-depth understanding. So volume is gonna be the first thing that we deal with. And when I'm talking about volume, I'm talking about a number of sets per week within our overloading parameters. So overloading parameters are basically, you know, how many reps at what intensity, uh, and that's gonna be phase dependent. So as we look at volume, we're dealing with hypertrophy, strength, and peaking. So when I'm giving you these volume numbers, if I'm talking in hypertrophy, we're gonna be looking at about 60 to 82.5% for sets of six to 12 reps. If you've watched the squat video, you'll notice it's a bit higher uh, intensity ranges. That's because bench is less weight, uh, so people can typically still recover even if it's a little bit heavier. It's just not generally as fatiguing because less range of motion uh, less total weight, absolute weight being used, less overall muscle mass being used. Uh, and then depending on how big you are, strong you are, how heavy a weights you're lifting is going to dictate where you are a little bit in this range. So if you're, you know, a super heavyweight and you're benching 550 pounds, yeah, you might be more in the similar kind of ranges that we were for the squat, like 55 to 75 or 80 percent. But if you're, you know, a 52 kilo class, female, then yeah, doing 82.5% for multiple sets of six in the bench press, probably not too uh, far-fetched for you. Then for strength, we're going to look at 75 up to 92.5% for sets of three to six reps. And finally, for peaking, 90% plus for sets of one to three reps. So as I refer to a number of sets uh, for MEV or MEV, if we're talking hypertrophy, it's a number of sets in this range, strength a number of sets in this range, peaking a number of sets in this range. So anything outside of that would basically be a warm-up set and we're not gonna be counting that here. Now we have to apply some level of common sense here because if you were gonna do 82.5% for a set of 12, well, congratulations, because you just made a new PR, almost for sure. Uh, and your MEV and MRV are gonna be way lower if you're going the high end of the intensity range and the high end of the rep range. So, you know, if you're doing, and the same to the other side of things, if you're doing all 60% for sets of six, you're gonna be able to do way more sets and still recover. Uh, so as long as we have kind of a common sense distribution through those ranges, we'll be fine. So what would, what would we consider low volume and high volume? So low volume during hypertrophy we're gonna be dealing with like six to 10 sets per week. And high volume in hypertrophy, we're maybe talking about getting up to 20 to 30 total sets a week. In strength, we're gonna be at a little bit lower volume than we were in hypertrophy, of course. So probably four to eight sets on the low side of things. And then on the high side of things, maybe 16 to 24 sets. And finally, in peaking, again, we're going a little bit lower volume as we move through phase to phase. We're going three to six sets on the low side, like 12 to 16 sets on the high side of things. And then as you move from phase to phase, how should you progress your volume? Typically, I see people doing about 75% uh, of the volume on their previous phase. So if you were doing you know, 12 sets uh, during hypertrophy, you're probably going to be looking at about eight sets uh, as a starting point in strength and then moving moving from there. So what pushes someone towards being at the higher end of the volume ranges versus the lower end of the volume ranges? I covered this in depth in the, in the squat video, so I'm not going to talk about it too much here, but factors to consider gender. Women are going to be able to typically do more volume than men. Age. Older lifters can't handle as much volume as younger lifters. Size. Small lifters, body weight, height, and, and body weight uh, probably can do more volume than taller, heavier lifters. Strength. Stronger lifters aren't going to be able to do as many sets uh, as lighter lifters because every set they're doing is more fatiguing, is more stimulating and fatiguing. Experience. Experience is a bit of a tricky one. 
as when you're a true beginner and you've never really lifted much before, you're gonna have a time where just as you build your work capacity, you're able to do more sets, more sets, more sets. That could last through the, uh, you know, an intermediate range. And then as you become advanced and very advanced from an experience standpoint, uh, and experience is a bit of a objective thing, but let's call beginner probably up to three years, intermediate maybe three to six years, advanced six to 10 years, 12 years, and very advanced beyond that. Your other sport background uh, also needs to be considered for that, but again, it's more complex than I really wanna get into here. The amount of volume you can handle is probably gonna trend up for a while as you build more and more general and special work capacity. And then as you're getting into advanced and very advanced, you're also hopefully getting into being very strong, uh, you know, and you're older now, maybe some injuries have accumulated. So those MEV, MRV numbers are gonna begin to trend down as you get into advanced and very advanced. And then finally, your lifestyle. Are you sleeping well? How's your diet? Are you cutting weight? Are you massing? Uh, you know, are basically, are you getting sufficient calories for recovery? Do you have a lot of outside training stress, whether that is because of a manual labor job, because you're a student uh, and you know, dealing with exams, or you have another physical hobby, jujitsu, pickup basketball, whatever it is, outside of lifting. Those are all factors that are gonna help determine if we're gonna be on the lower side or the higher side. Some other considerations that are gonna push you tor towards higher low volume are your technique. If you have a you know, maximum width grip, max legal grip, uh, that's tending to be a bit more stressful to the shoulders, uh, so that could lower the volume that you're able to tolerate. But on the other hand, it's also a shorter range of motion, which would be something that indicates you can handle higher volume, where close grip bench pressing, uh, you know, you're moving it through a longer range of motion, but it's probably a little bit easier on the shoulders and the pecs. So, you know, th those kind of things are going to be kind of tough and we're splitting hairs, you know, we're probably talking about plus or minus one set here or there. Uh, if you have super long arms, you know, that's for a inter-individual difference. I always get inter and intra mixed up. But, you know, if you have super long arms, then you're probably not gonna be able to handle quite as much volume as your stubby armed friend, who also probably has a bigger bench press than you because of that, that reason. Now, if your arm length is changing a lot during the course of your training career, that's a different issue. Uh, you know, one that I'm not experienced enough to speak on. So, and then how much focus are you putting on your other lifts? If you're a great bench presser, and to bring up your total, which is how you win powerlifting meets with the total, you're gonna de-emphasize your bench press a little bit so you can put a bit more attention towards your squat or deadlift, then you might be you know, two, three sets less. And if you're in the inverse, you're a great squatter, a great deadlifter, maybe you need to take a couple sets off the squat, so you're, you know, especially low bar squatting, so your arms, shoulders, elbows aren't getting beat up as much, and you can do a little bit of extra bench pressing. So a lot of different factors to consider there. Luckily, I have a video called Finding Your MRV that goes into all of those factors much more in depth. So for the purposes of today's video, we're gonna have our example lifter. So lifter A, and this is, we're carrying over the same, the same examples from the last video. Lifter A is a 275 pound male, 37 years old, been lifting for 12 years, very strong, 475 pound bench press. And then lifter B is gonna be a 125 pound female, 22 years old, only been lifting for 18 months and just hit that body weight bench press, 125 pounds. Lifter A is probably gonna be on the low side of things, you know, maybe eight to 10 sets a week in hypertrophy. Uh, for the squat video, I know we did a example of strength, uh, of uh, strength block. For bench press, we're gonna do a hypertrophy block. So lifter A is gonna be on the lower side of things, so let's say eight to 10 sets a week, and lifter B definitely gonna be on the higher side of things, uh, particularly as height is considered there. I don't know how tall this hypothetical person is, but they're 125 pounds, so they're probably like you know, 5'3 or something like that. So they're gonna be in the higher side of things. So let's call 22 to 26 sets per week. So now that we know the volume that they're gonna be using, now we need to look at the frequency of their training. All right, so now that we've established the volume, the number of sets per week that our athletes are gonna be doing, Lifter A, our big, strong, experienced guy, doing eight to 10 sets of bench a week, and Lifter B, our more beginner, lightweight female, 
She was doing all the way up to 22 to 26 sets per week. Now we can start deciding about how many times a week do they need to bench press? So how are we gonna distribute that volume? So our typical range for bench press frequency is gonna be two to five times per week. That's the total range. Maybe some people even could bench press six times a week, but anywhere in that range is gonna be, you know, something that I pretty frequently have programmed before or the Juggernaut AI app is programming for the, uh, the very diverse range of athletes using it. So what determines if you're doing higher frequency or lower frequency? It's a lot of the same things that determined if you're doing higher volume or lower volume. Um, particularly female lifters seem to benefit from more frequency. You know, that's because of less upper body muscle mass and absolute like lighter weights that when you're doing a bench press workout, like in our example, lifter B with a max of 125 pounds, she's gonna be doing a lot of, of bench press workouts with 95 to 110 pounds, it's just really difficult to create that much stimulus and fatigue uh, to where you can't decay enough fatigue and you know, looking at a SRA curve, stimulus recovery adaptation curve, guess what, there's a video about that, you know, where a day or two days later, she's not recovered enough to be able to do a, another bench press workout. And it's not that she has to be recovered all the way, we actually wanna avoid that because that's probably gonna to create too long of a distance to where adaptation effects are starting to fall off um, and, and technical SRA is falling off before we're getting that next exposure. Uh, so, you know, for lifter B here, five time a week bench pressing, very likely a, a possible thing. Uh, lifestyle factors and stuff uh, aside uh, and, you know, individual considerations like how much time do you have to train? How many total days a week are you training? Where on the other side of things, lifter A, 475 pound bench press, 275 class, pretty strong guy. Uh, depending on phase, you know, maybe we're looking at two or three times a week bench pressing. And then we also get into like half sessions uh, of bench press. And I talk about this more in depth in the squat video as well. But a half session is just kind of my way of denoting and then teaching people how to program uh, a truly less overloading session. So whether you're creating that less overloading session by exercise selection, like picking exercises that are self-limiting in nature, or you're just giving them less total volume uh, or a little bit lower intensity in that session, that's a good way to do it. So you can go more in depth with this in our finding your frequency video. But for the purposes of our example athletes here, let's say lifter A is gonna bench press 2.5 times per week, and lifter B is gonna bench press four times per week. So as we get more in depth in deciding on how to distribute uh, their bench press volume, lifter A's eight to 10 sets, lifter B's 22 to 26 sets in this hypertrophy phase across the, across the week, we also need to consider exercise variation. So variation is gonna be both the movement that we're doing and how we're loading the movement. Is it you know, heavier or lighter? Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can create variation, but those are sort of the most popular ones, exercise variation and loading strategy. So if you wanna learn more about the best exercises to address your specific weak points, you can check out our best exercises to improve your bench press video or our addressing weak points series. Uh, so for example, let's say that lifter A is weak off the chest. He's weak off the chest and he's benching two and a half times per week. Those sessions may look like, notice I'm going A, C, B. So our C session is gonna be the half session. And for a lifter who's weak off the chest, uh, exercises that are really helpful there are things like wide grip bench press, feet up bench press, and you know, depending on phase, we're probably always gonna have competition bench press in there. Uh, in a hypertrophy phase, which is our example with this, it wouldn't be uncommon to have a lifter of that qualification level, benching 475, not do any competition bench pressing for you know, their one month or two months of hypertrophy training, depending on how long that is. They're still doing a lot of bench pressing, things that are close enough. It's not the bench press is not such a complex, nuanced, intricate movement that if you only do close grip bench for a month, you're gonna totally forget how to bench with your competition medium grip. Don't worry about that. Maybe it's gonna feel awkward for like two sessions back into the strength block and then it'll be fine. 
But if lifter A is weak off the chest, maybe we're gonna organize his training. We'll keep comp bench in there for the sake of this. Our least emphasized bench press session here, again, there's a lot of different ways that we can organize this uh, from a fatigue management standpoint, but let's put his feet up bench press here, which good exercise to address the off the chest weakness, but also is sort of self-limiting. It'd be very rare for an athlete to be able to handle as much weight in the feet up bench press as they do in the competition bench press. And then their B, their second most important session, is gonna be wide grip bench press. So we've got eight to 10 sets to distribute here. Taking those eight sets per week and we've got three workouts to do it, there's a lot of possible good ways to organize this and that's kind of a theme through all these videos is there's not one right way to do that. But very rarely do I like to have uh, identical sessions across the board. So like if they were gonna do nine sessions a week, it's very rare that it's gonna be three sessions, three, uh, three sets, three sets, three sets. More commonly, if we're trying to, dis trying to distribute, let's call it nine, nine sets, it's gonna be like four sets, two sets, three sets. And we are in hypertrophy, so if that's gonna be like three sets of, or four sets of eight at you know 60 to 65%, two sets, and again, <clears throat> because there's so many kind of undulations and levels that we can have for fatigue management, if our lifter A here is recovering pretty well in the bench press, then this C session, the half session, could also be two sets of eight at the same kind of intensity ranges. But if he needs more fatigue management, so not just a kind of self-limiting exercise uh, in the feet up bench press, but also a reduction in volume or intensity, uh, sorry, a reduction in intensity, because we already have a reduction in volume just doing two sets, maybe he's gonna do two sets of six at 60 to 65%. And then finally the wide grip session, we're making all those same considerations again but because it's a more primary session, bench B rather than C, maybe we're going back up to three sets of eight at 60 to 65%. Here in the A session as well, we could organize it a bit differently than just straight across sets and do a top set. So a set of eight at, let's call it seven RPE, and then drop 10 to 15% from that for three by eight, so we're still getting the same total volume, top set, down sets. You could go less down sets here for an extra set over there. It doesn't, you know, it, there's not one right way to do it. There's a lot of considerations to be made. So you can learn more about those considerations by referring to our utilizing variation for fatigue management video, as well as the video directed adaptation versus adaptive resistance. But what we're looking to do with exercise selection with how we distribute our volume from uh, across the sessions from week to week, uh, all that stuff is that we're trying to manage direct fatigue from bench pressing. So, you know, one session, do you pick uh, a more kind of chest dominant movement? One session, a more shoulder dominant movement? One session, a more tricep dominant movement? Uh, also, you might have to mitigate stress around uh, particularly squat training uh, you know, if you have low bar squatting and matching up with your bench press training, I'm sure if you're a low bar squatter, you've probably experienced some shoulder or elbow pain. So if you have a bench session the day after your squat session, maybe that needs to be a, a board press or pin press, something that reduces the range of motion because going all the way down to your chest is stressful on the shoulder. Uh, maybe it needs to be close grip instead of wide grip. A uh, lot of different small considerations to be made. And the other piece of it is if you have a bench press session, let's say a heavy bench press session the, or a bench press session the day before a heavy deadlift, you also want to mitigate like lower body, particularly low back stress that could be coming along with that. So putting feet up bench press uh, or incline bench, something that's you know not going to put the demand on your low back to get into a bigger arched position the day before you deadlift could be a smart thing. So. A lot of considerations to be made. Luckily, I have a lot of videos uh, for you to watch about this. And there's levels to the fatigue management. So in the same way, 
in the squat video that I talked about, you know, having three low bar squat sessions across the week as being like the lowest level of fatigue management and then going to, you know, a low bar split squat, belt squat as kind of the highest level of fatigue management in a three time a week uh, exercise selection situation. The same idea exists for bench press. We could go, you know, comp bench all the way across. Uh, again, in hypertrophy, I wouldn't do that no matter what fatigue management situation we're in because you're going to run into too much adaptive resistance. But depending on phase, you could go comp bench for all three sessions or, you know, you could move to like comp, feet up, comp, comp, feet up, wide grip, comp, feet up, close grip, comp, dumbbell, feet up. Uh, a lot of uh, decisions that can be made to still get good bench press work in, strengthen the pressing muscles to satisfy SR, SRA curve, to give enough exposure to competition-esque bench press movements to even satisfy the technical SRA curve, because like I said, it's not that complicated, uh, but keep your low back healthy, keep your elbows, your shoulders, you know, all these different th things healthy. So you have to look at yourself, the athletes you're working with, and see how are they recovering, how much uh, exposure do they need to improve their technique. So now that we understand you know, what bench press or how much volume of bench pressing we're doing, how often we're bench pressing, and what type of movements we're putting into those uh, bench press examples. So we also need to, need to show you how to distribute lifter B's volume across her four sets of bench a week. So the, the A, C, B setup for lifter A, a lot of different ways that, that could be, but you know maybe they're bench pressing on Monday, they have their C bench on Wednesday after they squat or deadlift, and then they have their B bench on Friday, and maybe they're uh, squatting or deadlifting again on Saturday. Lifter B, they're gonna bench press four times a week. Uh, so a typical way that that might get set up is we'll have our A earliest in the week, and again, that can move around. Um, and we'll probably put D after that, bench B, and bench C. So that's going to create some undulation through the week for them. And we got a lot of sets to distribute here. Uh, you know, let's call it 22 to 26 sets. So for the purpose of this, let's distribute 22 sets across here. So our bench A is going to be our most primary movement. So let's put in comp bench. And for a less experienced lifter, like lifter B is comp bench technique. Uh, you know, they're not going to run into adaptive resistance as quickly. Uh, and any time that lifter B takes away from comp bench it represents a bigger portion of her training career where lifter A, who's been training for 12 years, him taking a month away from competition bench probably isn't really a big deal because he's got 12 years of doing it already, where lifter uh, B taking you know, a month or two away, as she also probably has a longer hypertrophy phase, is representing a much bigger portion of her career. You know, if she took two months off of comp bench and was only doing variations, that's you know, over 10% of her training career that she hasn't done comp bench, her technique might actually get a bit worse. And let's say that lifter B is weak at lockout. Not that you can read that chicken scratch I just put up anyways. <laughs> and lifter A was off the chest. So our lifter B weak at lockout, comp bench, then some good uh, other movements that could be for uh, improving the lockout are going to be, you know, close grip bench, board press, uh, even for a lifter of this experience level and in a hypertrophy phase, it's going to be the most general. Uh, if she's capable of, of doing them well enough, dips could be a good option there. Probably would be a bit unlikely that a female lifter with 18 months of experience is going to be able to go heavy enough or do enough volume on dips to really get a good workout out of it. But let's say we're going to go close grip board press, and then another comp bench because of the reasons I, I mentioned. If the career is so short and we went no comp benching for a month or two months, you know, two months would be 9% of her entire training career. Now we've got 22 sets to distribute here. So let's see, let's call it like seven sets here. Bench D, our smallest workout, maybe three sets. Bench B, our second biggest workout, is going to be six sets. <laughs> Let's actually call it four sets for bench D. Six sets, 11, six, 
and then four sets again for bench C. And it's gonna follow a similar structure as this. So the bench A workout could be top set and then six back down sets. Uh, close grip sets, probably straight across sets, likely doesn't need the reduction in volume through a less number of reps, but you gotta you know, see how that athlete's responding. So this is probably more likely to be like four sets of eight and then six sets of eight. Maybe you could also throw in a top set on board press. That'd be totally fine in a situation like this. And then the comp bench, four sets, getting to the end of the week. Maybe this is gonna be four sets of six, but at a similar intensity as the back down sets were on your A primary day. So last thing I wanna cover is how are we progressing from week to week? So to go more in depth on this, refer to the undulating periodization strategies video, as well as selecting and progressing weights video. Um, because it, it would be likely that lifter A here is probably using alternating or undulating periodization while lifter B is using linear periodization. So for hypertrophy, uh, we're looking just at increasing sets from week to week with small weight increases. Strength, we're looking at increasing weight from week to week, increasing intensity with either a flat number of sets or decreasing sets from week to week. And then uh, in peaking, we're increasing weight from week to week while definitely decreasing the number of sets as we go. But for the ease of example here, let's pretend that lifter A is using linear periodization. Uh, so the way that we're gonna look at changing that from week to week, we're gonna be going from his nine sets up to just 10 sets, maybe 11 sets. Again, the MEV and MRV numbers aren't hard and fast rules. Like you gotta just kinda train and see how I feel. You know, if he gets to his bench B workout on week three, the week before a deload week, and he's like, you know, I could do one more set. He knows he has the deload week coming up. So if we go, you know, to 11 sets, even though I wrote eight to 10 on the board here, like his arms aren't gonna fall off right then. So, but how are we progressing this? So in week one, we're doing this. In week two, he's staying with comp bench. That eight is gonna maybe go up to eight and a half RPE. And then there's three sets of eight uh, back down sets. Let's probably keep that at three sets of eight uh, because this is already gonna be a pretty high intensity day. And if we're keeping the, the drop the same, he's dropping 10 to 15% off the top set. He's dropping 10 to 15% off the top set. Now at eight and a half RPE, these back down sets are gonna be heavier as well. These two sets of six here is probably gonna change into three sets of six at 62 to 68% instead of two sets of six at 60 to 65. And finally, the wide grip day, depending on how the athlete's responding, that could be three sets of eight at slightly higher intensity, 62 to 68. It could be four sets of eight at the slightly higher intensity or at the same intensity. You know, th those kind of changes, honestly, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, you know, someone is, not, uh, their bench press result at a meet is not gonna hinge upon, well, did I go up by 2% or did I add uh, an extra set or did I do both? Where you're gonna run into problems is if, you, if, if this is representing too steep of a change, too difficult of an increase from week to week and you know as the athlete doing this or the coach programming it that you're overloading them a bit too much in week two when they've got week three to follow up because we don't wanna make this workout too hard because we know we have our most important bench press workout of the train cycle coming up next. So in week three, we're gonna go for our eight rep at 9.5 to 10 RPE three by eight back down sets. This is the moment to set a PR right there. If you have an established eight rep max, that's the time to beat it. That should be a number that you have in mind back here at the start of week one when you pick your weights for that seven RPE day. Of course, you're gonna go by feel for the day, but you should have a target in your mind uh, You know, for an experienced lifter like this who likely has an established eight rep max. You know, If he's done 345 for eight before, we want to try and make this week three day before a deal or week before a deload 350 for eight to get a little bit of a PR. So if it's going to be 350 for eight here, it's probably you know 340 or 335 for eight here, and you know 315 or 320 for eight there in week one. See how the athlete feels. 
we could progress again here, three by six at 65 to 70%. This maybe if they're responding really well, this could become four by six. Same idea over here, four by eight, you know, maybe 65 to 70%. Again, because this is the last bench workout before a deload week, you know, knock yourself out, go crazy. <laughs> um, if, if you feel like you've got it in you, you know, to, to do a couple extra sets to get more overreaching, uh, you know, it would be planned overreaching in that case because you know you have the deload week coming up. So I know I threw a lot at you there, I gave you a lot of other video links to, to check out, but hopefully you've got a good idea now of how you can set up a bench press training program from the amount of volume the athlete's doing, the frequency of lifts they're doing, what lifts they're doing to fulfill that frequency, and then how you're progressing those lifts from week to week to week. So check out the, the how to design a squat program video, how to design a deadlift program video. We'll be coming up in a couple more weeks. You know, program design manual, scientific principles of strength training, all that stuff, jtsstrength.com, links down below, links all above. Or you can be like, Chad, I'm so confused by everything you just said. Can't you just do it for me? In fact, yes, I can. You can try the Juggernaut AI app for two weeks free through the website juggernautai.app, link down below, link up in the corner, and it'll just do all the thinking for you and you'll never have to worry about any of this stuff again. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel.